Nearly everyone is familiar with John F. Kennedy's famous speech, We choose to go to the moon and to do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. He delivered that speech in September of 1962, but at the time, nobody knew how to land a person on the moon, and many people thought it was impossible. Around that same time, NASA received some strange new micrologic chips that were made using a new shrinking process called lithography, which ignited the semiconductor industry. The lithography shrinking process has progressed over the years to become one of the most complex processes ever developed. Today, the industry uses extreme ultraviolet, or EUV, lithographic machines to manufacture the most advanced processors. And there's a saying in the semiconductor industry, semiconductors aren't rocket science, they're much harder. It took three decades, billions of dollars, a series of technological mind-boggling innovations, and the creation of one of the world's most complex supply chains to even develop EUV. Hello and welcome to Advantest Talk Simi. I'm your host, Keith Schaub, Vice President of Technology and Strategy at Advantest. The following are excerpts from a recent conversation I had with Mr. Toshimichi Oai, Senior Vice President of E-Beam Lithography at Advantest's R&D facility in Saitama, Japan, and where we are talking about the evolution of lithography and semiconductor manufacturing and the important role that Advantest plays in helping to enable next-generation semiconductor chips. Hi, Toshi. Yokoso. Welcome to Advantest Talk Simi. Thank you for inviting me. Simple lithography, as I would describe it, is a process where we shine a light source through a photo mask onto a wafer. The mask is a specially designed plate that allows light to shine through it in a tiny defined pattern. The tiny patterns of light that shine through react with the photoresist chemicals on the wafer, and later those areas can be etched away. This process is repeated over and over and is similar to building a skyscraper floor by floor. One of the key elements used in the lithography process is the mask. The mask is a sort of blueprint that is used to focus and direct the light into tiny shapes onto the wafer. Maybe you've played shadow puppets with small children where you use your hands to cast an animal shadow like a dog or a rabbit onto the wall. This shadow casting is the same principle used in lithography. In semiconductor lithography, the mask is used to cast a kind of reverse shadow onto the wafer. Here's how Toshi describes it. Chip has a many, many line of space or many shape on the silicon wafer. So mask is an original designing pattern on the mask. So the lithography tool, like a stepper or a scanner, expose the mask shape onto the silicon wafer. The factor is one of four. So if you need 100 nanometer pattern on the silicon wafer, four times the bigger pattern on the mask, like a 400 nanometer. This is a simple relationship in between silicon and the mask itself. So mask is made by the silicon glass plus more of the silicide pattern or a chrome pattern to shut the exposure light itself. On the other hand, on the silicon wafer side, it is necessary to resist layer making before the exposing. This is kind of resist react on the light source. If mask cut off the light source on this area, resist is not reacting. Then pattern making on the silicon. This is simple phenomena or simple explanation. Lithography innovation and evolution have undergone multiple phases and continue to this day. In the 1960s, we started with contact printing, but that was soon replaced by proximity printing. Proximity printing was good up to 2 microns, but to shrink further in the 1980s and 90s, the industry developed lithographic projection printing, which opened up the nanometer era. This was later followed by wet immersion, then DUV, deep ultraviolet, and most recently EUV, 
Extreme Ultraviolet As Toshi described earlier, the lithography process is similar to photography, and our goal is to cast the smallest line width possible onto the wafer. That size, called the critical dimension, or CD, is defined by a very simple formula. CD is equal to K1 times lambda divided by NA. So there are only three parameters that can be adjusted. K1, a constant that can't be smaller than 0.5. Lambda, which is the wavelength of the light source. And NA, which stands for numerical aperture. To achieve smaller CDs, we need shorter wavelengths and or we need higher NAs. Listen in as Toshi quickly walks us through to today's state-of-the-art EUV process. So recently the chip size is shrinking, therefore the mask pattern also shrinking. To realize such a scaling, it is necessary to have the optical light source wavelengths become shorter. So G-line, I-line, KRF, and ARF, ARF immersion, then now in the moment EUV light source on the mass production now. So this is the state of the art chip making process now. Printing and patterning a chip requires multiple patterns and multiple layers, similar to building a skyscraper floor by floor. Some of today's most advanced chips have 20 plus layers, even as high as 100. After printing, etching, diso etch, diso etch, this is kind of double patterning. Then after that, again, the process to another next layer, again, diso etch, diso etch. Most recent high technology chips has made more than 20 layers. DUV, deep ultraviolet, is still a big workhorse in the industry today. But to go even smaller, we had to move to EUV, extreme ultraviolet. EUV operates at 13.5 nanometers, and it took nearly three decades, billions of dollars, and multiple innovations to finally get there. One of the amazing innovations is with the optics and the mirror technology. The name itself coming from the wavelengths, DUV, deep ultraviolet area. EUV, extremely ultraviolet area. So the light source, the wavelength of the light source is big different. But for the scanner tool point of view, or optics point of view, there are big changing from DUV to EUV. Up to DUV generations, optics is simply lens optics. Lens optics is just lens. You have an eyeglass, this is also lens, this is lens. But in the case of EUV, very short wave length area, it is very difficult to make uh, some normal lens type. So therefore, the EUV scanner have mirror type of lens, parabolic type. So the optical light source is focused onto the silicon wafer side by using the parabolic mirror type. So this is big different from the EUV scanner. Only one choice to make a mirror type to focus of the such a short wavelengths. Building a perfect skyscraper. Connecting all the layers as perfectly and accurately as possible is critical. And even though we use EUV at 13.5 nanometers, we still want and need to print smaller dimensions. And the industry uses all sorts of tricks to print 5 nanometers and even 3 nanometer sizes. One of the tricks used is double patterning. Listen in as Toshi describes how that works. 13.5 nanometer. EPE, edge placement error. This is a key measurement methodology to evaluate the lithography tool itself or overlay. So you know that there are many, many, many layers, the hundred layers. So each layer exactly aligned to connect layer to layer. So edge placement error 
is key factor how good align to layer to layer, not only layer to layer, inside of the layer also very important because nowadays double patterning is main lithography process. It means it is necessary to have two times、uh, lithography. Can or、well, lithography one time, then next time making a pattern, something in between by the first shot. So the optical resolution is limited, 100 nanometer line and space length. Then this is one time shot. Then next time shot, just shift it 15 nanometer, again making 100 nanometer line and space. So After that, actually we have 50 nanometer line and space. This is double pattern. In this case, if first shot and the second shot would have some misalignment, therefore EPE is very important. Remember we mentioned NA, numerical aperture, a bit earlier as one of the parameters that could be adjusted to achieve smaller geometries? Here's how Toshi describes it. Nuclear aperture. So, this is the key number how to get the high resolutions. Big NA. So, this is a lens parameter. Big NA makes a very high resolution、uh, imaging. So, now EUV process, normal EUV process, NA is let's say something around 0.33. If this 0.33 would be double, 0.66, the resolution becomes half. This is a relationship. This is op- the totally optical designing, the very, very complicated, the lens type, lens shape, optical path, and many factors including. This works done by Carl Zeiss in Germany. Carl Zeiss is a partner of ASML. All of the ASML tool, optical design by Carl Zeiss. They have unique technology, so called anam- anamorphic optics. So it is very difficult to achieve the high NA, increasing NA for all of the viewer. Light source is normally exactly circle. In this case, NA is exactly the same everywhere. But for, for making a high NA by using the parabolic mirror, There are some limitations to making a high NA optics. So, Carl Zeiss and ASML decided to have unsymmetric、uh, light source shape, anamorphic. So, in this case, the NA is not exactly the same. So, this is quite complicated, the designing change for the chip making, especially for mask design. Today, we can print 5 nanometers and even 3 nanometers. What about 2 nanometers and beyond? Beyond 2 nanometer, nobody knows what would be happening. This is totally physics, you know. Transistor, how transistor works. This is very deeply physics concern. If the transistor size becomes small, 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 transistor Type designer should discuss tunneling effect. They are thinking about atomic level control, all of the process too, including the metrology too. There are new optics being invented and developed for next generation systems. The way we design new masks is completely changing. Geometric shapes can now interfere with one another and must be well understood and modeled. And there are some important measurements that help us measure and control these shapes, such as OPC, optical proximity correction, and CDU, critical dimension uniformity. So, for the optics theory, it is necessary to have some type of correction pattern. It means the shape on the silicon and the shape on the mask is not exactly the same based upon the Optics. There are some t y p e of the optics error factor, including how to correct such an optics error. The mask designer calls optical proximity correction, OPC. So, OPC pattern is very unique and very complicated. 
Methodology tool should control how good OPC shape already making or shape is some error including not only smallest pattern but also two dimensional、uh, imaging evaluation is key factor in the EU regeneration. But nowadays, the, there are many, many unique patterns on the mask. Therefore, it is necessary to measure two dimensional pattern shape itself, not only pattern witness. So, this is the recent methodology topics. For example, for the one dimensional measurement, the measurement accuracy is below 1.1 nanometer three sigma. This is atomic level. For the mask point of view, they have specification like CDU, CD uniformity. CD is critical dimension, uniformity all over the mask. So, lithography team request for mask team should have one nanometer uniformity mask all over the mask area. So, mask uniformity specification, let's say about one nanometer for EUV mask. Therefore, methodology tool should control tool, tool accuracy less than 0.1 nanometer. Although EUV technology is finally available, EUV is still relatively new and it isn't without some major challenges that Advantest is helping to resolve. E5620, this is mask review SEM, SEM, scanning electron microscope. This is Review to dedicated to EUV mask. I need to explain another story of the EUV mask. Smartphone. Then your smartphone has the protect glass film to protect your display. All of the mask should have protecting material for the mask surface because if tiny dust dropped onto the mask surface, The productivity or yield of the silicon will have drastically dropped down. So EV light source is still very low. One of, factor one of ten compared to the DUV. So if EV mask have some specific cover, it means the light source power is reduced something around 20%, 30%. This is direct impact to the productivity or throughput. So therefore, nowadays, EUV mask do not use any the dust protecting cover. It means it is necessary to frequently check how this EUV mask still keep clean or there are some contamination on the mask surface. So the lithography team keep watching the yield if starting to drop down. Where is the dust? Where is the contamination? What happened on the mask surface? This should be done by laser tech too. This is the main reason why the laser tech company laser tech is blooming up in the, in the share market here in Japan. But unfortunately, laser tech tool can indicate where is the dust is, but cannot indicate what is the dust material itself. And Exact size of the particle itself because of the resolution limitations. Our product E5610 E5610 mask review SEM is high resolution plus we have this tool have EDX analyzer. This is composite analyzer by X-ray. So 10 kb electron beam energy hit on the mask surface. It becomes the X-ray producing, then the analyzing the X-ray, it is possible to know what the material is. So many E5610 is working just below the ASML EUV scanner tool. For E5620, next generation mask DLSM is we achieved completely fully automation and high throughput. So this is our product. What we do show the Semicon Japan. What's next? ASML, IMEC, and Advantest are collaborating on next generation chip manufacturing technology. IMEC is well known for its expertise in shrinking circuitry for nanotechnology industries. In 2015, the New York Times stated that IMEC has helped pioneer techniques to produce some of the world's smallest and most sophisticated chips and is considered. 
to be a world leader in nanoelectronics research. Listen in as Toshi describes the collaboration and where the industry is headed. For the chip shrinkage or scaling, it is necessary to have more high resolution tool, EUV scanner. So, next generation EUV scanner, high NA type. Not only silicon warehouse process, but also mask making process are big change because of the anamorphic uh, optical design. IMEC is worldwide leadership of the semiconductor process R&D. IMEC and ASML just started some collaboration work for the high NA level. So beta tool of high NA tool already start to fabrication in nether and ASML facilities. So they have the collaborated each other to evaluate it, all of the total process by using the high NA EUV lithography. Lithography process done by ASML, Netherlands, then we have moved to the IMEC Belgium, then in IMEC, the silicon we have another process and evaluation. And ASML and IMEC decided to have the mask evaluation too, because of the mask design also big change. So main topics of this evaluation is kind of printability. So the shape on the silicon weha and the shape on the mask weha has big changing. So they should check printability. How exact printed result on the silicon weha. For this purpose, it is necessary to measure the shape on the mask and measure on the silicon too and compare what is happened. So we decided to join this uh, high NA level by using our state-of-the-art mask CDSM E3650. And IMEC already selected our tool and uh, just start installation in, in this month. And also we have the sign of the joint development agreement in between IMEC and Advantest. How to evaluate the mask high NA EUV mask. So it will be take two or three years for this program. We should know the, what is the key point of the mask methodology, especially for high NA EUV mask type. Then we should equip very specific algorithm into the, our tool. Then our tool should be de facto standard tool for the high NA EUV tool. This is our strategy for the next generation. Toshi, we are nearing the end of the show. What final thoughts would you like to leave with us? Yeah, nobody knows how to, how to evaluate the high NA mask. With working with the both IMEC and ASML, we should know what is the key point for the mask methodology, what is the impact to silicon weha printability, and what is the necessary shape of the optical proximity correction, OPC, or many knowledge from the IMEC, fruitful knowledge. Thank you, Toshi. Again, it was wonderful to talk to you today, and thank you for taking the time to educate us on the fascinating world of nanotechnology and how the semiconductor industry manufactures chips and, most importantly, how advanced test technology is used throughout the process and across the industry. You're welcome. Thank you, too. Well, that does it for this episode of Advantest Talk Semi. See you next time. 